Welcome to DIY Easy Crafts and BergKnifeMaking.com. Today we're going to take a look at how to make a shark-themed chef's knife. Now this particular knife was made out of AEBL stainless steel. It has an electro-etched uh, shark design on the blade, and it also has fossil shark key, uh, teeth cast in resin as the handles. Now before we dive too deeply into, into making this particular knife, if anybody is interested in shark fishing or striped bass fishing, or marine life, uh, check out our other website, uh, bluedaysgear.com. That's B-L-U-E-D-A-Y-Z gear.com. We've got a huge assortment of uh, fishing related shirts, uh, sweatshirts, and windbreakers. Uh, check it out if you have a chance or if you're interested. Now to get back to the knife. We covered actually stitch, uh, tracing the design that was going to be used on the blade and transferring that into uh, the computer. I have a uh, little machine called the Silhouette Cameo and transferred that design into the Cameo on a previous video. I'll put a link to that video on this one. So we're going to pick up the video here or the project here. The Cameo cut out on self-adhesive vinyl the design, the shark design that I want to etch onto the blade and it is really able to cut out some nice details. The way that we did uh, the art is we made kind of a stencil so that we attached as many of the similar colored items together as possible so that when we're weeding and we're removing the vinyl um, it's not in tiny tiny little pieces. So basically everything or every piece of vinyl that I remove that exposes metal is what's going to get etched. Everything that stays covered, of course, will not get etched. If you look real close, there's a little shark that's going to be in the background, there's a sea turtle that's going to be in the background. So I've left a couple of things still covered. Those will also get etched, but they'll get etched for a shorter amount of time and they'll end up giving uh, the blade a two-tone effect. Now I use a 12-volt uh, battery charger, automotive battery charger um, connected to an electro plate. I wrap that in gauze. I attach the, the uh, power lead to the knife and the negative to the um, electro etching plate and I submerge it in a mixture of white wine vinegar and salt. This is the battery charger. It's set at 12 volts 2 amps. And I etch in 20 or 30 second increments for a total of about a minute then I cool the blade in, in water and then I etch it again for a total of a minute then you know in 20 second increments then cool it again um, I never really go more than a, a full minute otherwise it just gets too hot and I'm always, a, I'm always a little bit afraid that the vinyl won't hold up so after I've etched it for three minutes I'm gonna remove the next area so I remove the vinyl from the sea turtle the little background shark as well as some of the the, uh, the sand area and now I'm going to etch this area for a much shorter duration. So this is going to get etched for a total of about 30 seconds. When I've got all the areas etched, I can peel off that self-adhesive vinyl. Uh, sometimes it's, it's easy, easier to do with a little um, razor knife just to kind of scrape away the vinyl. And then you can use some emery or some sandpaper uh, to clean up the blade. Now, electro etching, the way I do it, I really end up with a very deep etch. You can catch your fingernail on it. You definitely want it to be able to hold up to, uh, you know, cleaning it up with that emery paper. Now, in the previous video, video I showed you how to get the artwork. I also showed how we cast these uh, fossil shark teeth into clear resin. A particular resin that we use, or that I used, is Total Boat Thick Set Resin uh, because it's very thin, takes a long time to harden, and therefore it gives plenty of time for the bubbles to reach the surface, and you don't end up with bubbles in your casting. So we're going to pick up now working on the handles. I shaped the front end of the scales or the handle material and I also want to polish those because once they're attached to the blade there's just no way of getting to or polishing that surface. So I usually shape it with a 60 or an 80 grit belt um, and then I'll take it to, down to a 120 and a 240 and then I will polish it just with an oscillating sander 
uh, you know, 400, 1,000, um, and 2,000 before uh, using a little bit of compound and hitting it on the buffing wheel. Cast resin happens to be pretty easy to work with. It doesn't take a lot of time to get rid of, you know, any deeper scratches. Uh, when you're buffing it, let the compound do the work. It's just a very light touch. You don't really want to uh, put a lot of pressure on the buffing wheel. And it, does, it only takes a few seconds to get it crystal clear. So the way I mount my handles is I, I glued one half of the handles onto the blade, and then I'll use the pre-drilled holes through the handle of the knife as my drill guide. Now notice I've got a backing board. I've also got a, clamp, a drill press clamp so that that blade can't catch and spin on me. All I'm doing is holding it down and I'm using a, um, a letter F drill bit for a quarter inch pin. So it's one size larger so the pins uh, will fit without any problem. Then I glue the second half up. You can, if you look closely, this is the second half um, on the bottom. And I'll use the holes that are now through the top half as my drill guide, very carefully lining them up. So actually in this step, I'm drilling through all three pieces, both halves of the handle as well as the, uh, as the steel of the, of the blade handle. I'm going to use a bandsaw just to cut off as much of the excess handle material as possible. I had cast some uh, turquoise along with the fossil shark teeth. And the turquoise was a little bit, a little bit tough to cut through. It cuts, but it just, it's almost like cutting a thin steel. So I, I want to remove as much as possible. Uh, it just saves a little bit on the grinding time. And then I finish profiling my knives right back on the 2x72. I usually use a 90 degree table and, a, and a, uh, maybe about a 60 grit belt. And I'll profile it until, you know, steel is showing on the full tang. I'll even do the inside curve just by letting the belt kind of overhang the right side of the flat platen and that allows it to kind of take the curvature The 2x72 is great because, you know, the size of the belts that are on here and, and the power of the machine, it really goes through this stuff pretty quickly. So now the handle is profiled. I'm going to start to shape it, and I'll, I'll do that right on the 2x72. Now, this part, you have to be really careful. Um, you can't let the blade touch that belt at all. You, you can ruin a knife very, very quickly. But if you're careful, it's a very uh, efficient way of uh, rounding over those, those hard 90 degree corners, those edges, and doing all of the rough shaping on the handles. I'll use the bottom uh, two inch contact wheel just to shape that inside that inside curve inside of the handle. And at this point, I'm really just removing material. I want to remove a, the same amount of material on both sides of the handles, kind of make them uniform. But I'll do the, the final shaping with a hand sander. Now you, the handles are, are starting to take shape. So back to the oscillating sander. Um, I went from a 220, 400, um, I think I had a, a 600 in there, a 1,000, and then a 2,000. You really want to get to at least a 1,000, uh, preferably 2,000, before you polish. And most times, I'll end up... Um, of course, hand sanding in between, but then I'll hit it on the buffing wheel and I'll polish it, and then I'll take a real good look for any uh, deep scratches, and I'll go back a couple of grits and do the process a second time. So the majority of my knives actually end up getting the handles uh, buffed and polished at least twice. And again, with this uh, cast resin handles, uh, a very light touch on the buffing wheel.
Now, one of the final stages of the knife making process is to sharpen the blade. Um, I establish uh, the micro bevel uh, on the 2x72 with a 120 grit belt, very carefully holding it at approximately 20 degrees. And I run or I establish that micro bevel until I get a burr along the entire length of the blade. And then I'll, I'll flip the knife and I'll grind the other side until I get a burr along the entire edge of the blade. Then I'll reduce, uh, I'm sorry, I'll change belts. I'll go to a finer grit belt um, and I'll go all the way up to 2000 grit, flipping uh, that burr with each belt. And with each belt change, I'll go slower and slower. The final step is just this leather uh, stropping belt that does the final polishing on that micro bevel. The whole process, you know, probably takes 10 minutes. And the end result is a blade that's, you know, literally razor sharp. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, some images of the finished product. You've got an electro-etched shark-themed uh, blade design, fossil shark teeth and turquoise cast in resin as the handle. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I would absolutely love it if you took a minute and just left uh, some feedback in the comments section. I would like to give you an invite to join us on our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making. And if you're interested in creating some of your own knives, I would suggest that you take a look at the book that uh, Jason Northgard and I put out a couple of years ago called Introduction to Knife Making, and you can find that on Amazon.com. Thank you very much.